All right, so here's what I'm working with now. So currently I have just these bars holding in place and it might be a little hard to see, but the metal's actually bending here and that's because it's only sheet metal. It's not meant to hold up an entire subframe or even half a subframe or a differential or anything. The frame rail is just beyond these carpets here. So it's actually pretty high in the car. So what we're actually gonna do, we're gonna cut through here to get some space and, and it's about three feet across. It's actually 37 inches. So we'll get a little creative with an extra inch or two. And basically we're going to create a box section right here in the trunk. And uh, hopefully it won't take away too much of the space, just lifting up the floor to be somewhat even with the back seats there. So we'll put one angle this way, fully welded all the way across. And then we'll put a second piece that way. And that'll go all the way across as well. So that's how we're gonna reinforce the rear subframe and then tie it into the, the actual frame rails. All right, so the gap is because the bolts are actually still underneath. That is my grinding of some of that sound deadening material and seam sealer. That is the bar going all the way across from frame rail to frame rail. I'll clear out a little bit more of that paint, a little bit more of that uh, definitely in this area right in here where we have a lot of I don't know, some sticky sound deadening type material. Let's see how much I can peel that off. We'll get to MIG welding once our new fitting comes in since the movers broke my welder. And for the time being, we'll go ahead and set our holes and move the diff. So the diff is actually going to be supported by this beam before we weld it. So it's perfectly in place and then we will weld it. All right, so it's not welded yet, but we just laid up the bars to go ahead and check our fitment here. And uh, well, obviously I knew that this one was going to be shorter because it wasn't 36 across, it was 37. So that took a little bit more than half. So we'll splice with some of the scrap that we have to finish up that piece right there. But basically, that is what it's gonna look like. And we're gonna need to cut holes here to access our bolts, ready to get this all. We're gonna put some weldable primer down so that we don't get any corrosion underneath any of this because it's not gonna be able to take it off ever. Uh, and then from there, we'll put some weldable primer on the inside to make sure nothing rusts, and then lock it all together, get it sealed, get it all welded. So you went ahead and coated the underside of our piece here as well as our weld surface with weld through primer we're gonna go ahead and see how well it works um, basically never used weld through primer before so it's a good time to test it out so I've got a jack holding up the differential right now and now that this is all dry we'll go ahead and drop through our bolts all right and now we can bolt it up from the underside The seam sealer really messed up that corner right there, but that's not the area that we're really worried about. Up here, we got really nice weld, really nice penetration, and uh, basically everything worked out really well there. Um, this is how it's gonna work when we've got the carpet and stuff down. And we'll actually, later on, we're gonna add in some gussets right here, and that'll help tie a little bit more into the frame. Currently, it's using uh, maybe like a bottom inch of the frame and the frames probably like five or six inches tall So that's what we're working with all the way across fully welded through and uh, I did weld in the sheet metal on the bottom even though that doesn't add uh, Strength significantly to the beam itself um, It does add a lot of rigidity to the floor pan and uh, Just gonna help stiffen up the chassis even more and of course it holds up our differential Last thing is gonna be drill holes to access the bolts that we have, which we have marked there. All right, so I had a little bit of an interesting experience. So normally when I have to get parts, uh, especially when they come from California, I have to special order them. It takes like two weeks to get to the East Coast, whether I'm in Florida, whether I'm in Georgia, whether I'm in Ohio or Texas, whatever. I always have to wait for parts. So it was pretty cool to be able to actually drive down about an hour to CX Racing and pick up a brand new uh, radiator for the intercooler system. Obviously we need a little bit of bracketry to make it fit, but height wise it should fit pretty much right in here. Probably chop the bumper up a little bit, get our mounts and everything set up. But other than that, should fit really well and I'm super excited to get it installed. So here we go. All right, so here is the radiator, the heat exchanger out of the packaging. This is actually the drain plug. Uh, but chances are, because of the way the mounting tabs are set up, I will most likely end up using this on top and either use it as a bleeder or just leave it like that and not use it at all. So we've got the exit, it's a little bit hard to see, coming from our coolant reservoir. It looks kind of like this, we got a right angle fitting. 
and basically it comes out. Got a, found a slightly bent hose, which was perfect for getting that little angle going straight down here. Now we got it coming off. We put a little bit of a uh, an old hose that we cut open to uh, to make sure we don't get any sharp edges there. And then we're gonna loop this right here and have it zip tied up so that it's nice and out of the way. And from there, and go straight in. All right, so we got some nut certs here, and that's how we're mounting our pump. And uh, that's the bracket that we have. Pretty simple, and we'll probably put a little bit of electrical tape there so it doesn't cut into the plastic pump. And that'll go in, super simple. And then right now we're going to cut a hole here so that we can have our hose go through off the pump and under the car. That's just a sample piece, but uh, we'll have this stuff going through and over. And this already connects to the pump right there. So we're all set on the feed side. And then now it's just the uh, output side. So here's a little something that I did because of the angle of the shift rod. It would go really well into the second gear and fourth gear and reverse slots, but when you try to put it in first, third, or fifth, it would kind of grind and be very difficult to get in, and that's because the angle didn't allow for optimum shifting with the L bracket. So we've actually extended our shift cable, took a similar piece of steel rod, and then we uh, chopped up the old cable, TIG welded an extension on there. Back here, we, uh, we TIG welded it in a stair step for two reasons. One, it wasn't exactly the right length, and two, the offset was a little bit off. It puts a lot more stress on the cable if you welded it straight and uh, then bent it. So instead, we went ahead and uh, gave it that little notch there. So now it's ready to go back in. 12 volts. Starter gear is not coming out. Bendix, basically that whole assembly is not working. I don't know why. But that's why my starter won't work. In my awesome engine swap car, starter won't work. Stupid. 